Hello, my name is Christopher, and welcome to the No Other Gospel channel. This is the program that endeavors to help fellow believers have a better understanding of biblical truth by exposing teachings that are not in line with the gospel and are contrary to God's word. Well, last time we did a pretty um, thorough study about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, specifically a thorough study throughout the book of Acts. And we looked at this idea of the quote-unquote second baptism of the Spirit and what people are saying about that and why people teach that and um, where they are getting that from. And we um, took a look at it and, and saw that people are misreading those passages, misapplying those passages. Uh, and frankly, they're not supposed to be applied to us today. The book of Acts isn't necessarily a book that we should find holistically repeatable in the church today. It's not something that we should see as normative. It was a description of how um, Christ had left and he had sent the Holy Spirit and how the church was um, sent to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And that's what we looked at, and, and so that's a one-time thing. That will never happen again. Jesus will never ascend again. The Spirit to the sending to the earth will never happen again. That church growth like that uh, from infantile stages uh, in Jerusalem with the apostles will never happen again. So to repeat it and say that we can directly apply it is a mistake. And what we found is this second baptism of the Spirit um, uh, kind of originated with the uh, Wesleyan holiness movement, which is... Uh, a little bit problematic, and it was pushed really um, at the early 1900s by the Pentecostals. And the whole idea of it isn't actually that old, um, and and it's not traditionally something that's been taught uh, throughout the history of the church, and it's not something that we find in Scripture. So um, we looked at that, and we want to take a look at it uh, again today in a different light. And why can't we let this go? Why can't we just say? Some might ask, just you know, people want uh, more of God, or they want to follow. The Spirit, can't we just let them have this? Um, but uh, if there's something slightly off about this, and we need to address it, and we don't want people to follow in the error of their ways, and we want people to follow biblically, and we want people to understand uh, the Bible. So yes, it matters, and it's critically important, and actually it's not something that's just slightly off base, really, but there's some bigger, deeper problems, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to look at the problems of this belief. What are the ramifications of this second baptism of the Holy Spirit? So we're going to highlight that, and, and then later, next, uh, at a future episode, we're going to talk about, okay, I understand that people uh, want to follow God with all their heart, mind, and soul. I know they want to be in step with the Spirit, and uh, they want to be um, uh, believers that are following uh, the heart of Christ. And so what are actually the good biblical terms and the concepts, and the, what are the things that are actually being taught in Scripture, specifically about the Spirit, and what is the Spirit's um, role in our life. We're going to look at that in a future episode. We're not going to look at that today, but that's a little tease um, uh, for another time. And I know that people have good hearts and they want to be able to do this and follow um, properly and, and be more like Christ. But a lot of times, and, and often it happens in the charismatic church, they end up overdoing it or overemphasizing things and taking it down a path that maybe they shouldn't. So what are the ramifications of this false belief? I know some people maybe take offense to this and say, oh, this isn't true. Um, this, and obviously these aren't holistic things that happen for everybody, but these are the dangers. These are the things that you can get into when you believe in this second baptism of the Spirit. If you didn't listen to the other video, please go back and, and watch it. That's critical. Um, I'll just say now this second baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is this notion that believers receive an anointing or a second blessing or a second work of grace of the Spirit upon them later after conversion. Um, and this, this anointing, whatever you might call it, gives them additional gifts, uh, additional benefits, um, more oomph in their spiritual life, whatever the case may be. So that's um, what that means to some. So let's deal with this theology. Let's talk about these six problems. I'm going to have six problems of the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. So number one is this. It diminishes the indwelling upon salvation. So what, am I, what do I mean by that? Every believer receives the indwelling of the Spirit. Nobody would disagree with that, even though even the people that teach the second baptism of the Holy Spirit do not disagree with that. Um, but the teaching the second baptism diminishes the um, initial indwelling, the initial infilling of the Spirit that you receive upon conversion. There is an, an emphasis now that th that isn't enough. 
there is a notion by the second baptism teaching that you need to have that as well to be a good Christian, to follow in the process of sanctification. And it often really downplays that initial infilling. It doesn't really, these movements, uh, Pentecostal movements and charismatic movements, they don't teach then what it means for the believer to have that spirit inside of them. They're always looking for this outward uh, impression, this outward anointing um, upon them, this outward experience. And um, and it becomes dangerous. And frankly, we're, it's dismissive of the indwelling of the Spirit that is already contained for every believer. So they want more, but they disregard something that they already have. So we need to st- stick with that foundational level. And that's something we'll get into in another episode. So that's number one. Number two is it creates the haves and the have-nots. So you come to one of these conferences, you go to a seminar, you, you know, even in a Sunday morning sermon, and you have somebody that comes up to the front and says, I have this, I've received this second baptism, and I'm going to impart it, impartation. We talked about Randy Clark last time. He's a big imparter. There's people that talk about, we're going to impart this to you, and I have this, and you don't, and I'm going to give this to you. Now, there's not that quite of an attitude, um, but it talks about uh, that's what that's what it seems, and I have this, and I'm going to bestow it on the next level of leadership. I'm going to this apostle, quote unquote apostle, or this prophet is going to give this pastor this additional level. I'm going to pass on this mantle. I like to use the word mantle to them, and we're going to pray that this would also fall upon you, this second baptism. And so I have it, you don't, and I have this special anointing, and it's a little bit of Gnosticism there. Uh, where there's this special knowledge that this person has, and I'm gonna, and you don't have it, and you need it, and um, so it creates this haves and haves nots. And I, I don't understand the notion. Why wouldn't God give you everything you need upon conversion? You have the Spirit. Um, the Bible says that He gives you everything for life and godliness. So we have that. We have that already as as believers when we receive Christ into our life and receive the. Uh, indwelling spirit. We don't have to go out and get something additional. Um, it, it creates these two levels of believer, and that's not right. So that's number two. Number three is it seeks an encounter, or it seeks an uh, encounter experience. You see this often if you watch some of these events where there's a lot of emotion in them, and emotion isn't always spiritual, and emotion um, is something that's sometimes surfacy, and it's not genuine, and it's not deep. Happiness is an emotion, but joy is deep-seated attitude within your life, a contentment, and and so um, there's a difference between emotions and something else, and a lot of times these result to emotions and experience, and people want this experience. It feels good if you've been to a conference, Um, A weekend conference that's very uplifting, maybe great worship, even great speakers. Uh, You had a great time with community and fellowship. You have some sort of a high. It's a spiritual high, and you like that, and it feels good. But that doesn't mean that you've received anything additional from the Spirit. It may feel good, uh, but oftentimes you go home, and you know, day later, a week later, you often feel that you're empty, and you know. But we search for this. This thing really says, oh, and you need this experience, this additional thing to come upon you. You need this encounter. Hey, look up the word encounter in the New Testament. You're not going to find it. You're not going to find this concept in this way uh, unless you misapply Acts. And so we need to remember that um, while we do want um, to be following God more and more wholeheartedly, let's use that word, and in obedience, we need to use biblical terms and biblical concepts and not talk about this encounter experience. That is not uh, what we need. So that's three. And four is this second baptism of the Holy Spirit diminishes the supremacy of Scripture. Why do I say that? And people wouldn't say, yes, yeah, Scripture is less important, but at the very least there's there's this new thing that is on par with Scripture, even sometimes but ahead of Scripture. You, I've heard plenty of these folks that really downplay the mess, the word and, and, and uplift like a prophet speaking it or this special anointing or fresh revelation. And this puts weight on this encounter experience over scripture and the spirit revealing scripture to you as you read it. And the scripture gets neglected. You know, you go to these conferences and, and you'll see, you know, you hear them read a verse or two. Sometimes it's out of context, but there's not a lot of thorough in-depth preaching that happens throughout a passage, through multiple verses to teach a true biblical concept 
concept. And, it, and it's not surprising. I mean, you don't get an encounter experience. It's not euphoria. It's not um, this emotional high, potentially, if you're sitting and listening to a speaker. They want big, raucous music and, and some sort of event and, and um, some sort of display, even a production and all that comes. But what we're doing here is we're, it's diminishing, the, you're wanting this outward experiencing and it's diminishing the indwelling scripture that you have, the scripture that you were supposed to retain in your heart and mind, as the scripture says. And in lieu of that, we, we are being taught that we need this fresh revelation, this fr new anointing, um, and we are discarding some of the truisms in scripture. And, um, you know, again, they wouldn't necessarily say that, um, but when you say that you need this second uh, baptism in your life, you're diminishing the fact that we already have scriptures in our lives. Everything that we need, as I, get, as I said, everything we need for life and godliness. So that's four. And f number five is the second baptism creates a works-based religion. And it doesn't always do this, but um, speakers tell you, okay, I'm going to provide this uh, impartation to you, this anointing, but you need to position yourself. You need to put yourself in a right place to receive this second baptism. There's a little bit of a earning mentality there. I have to earn this. I need to set my heart right. I have to um, go to God in prayer. I have to kneel. I have to fall down. I have to be pushed over. I have to shake. I have to speak in tongues. There's a number of things that sometimes get put up as hurdles that you need to jump over or hoops that you need to jump through to receive this second anointing. And it's not something that will come automatically. Uh, it's something that you have to earn a lot of times. And that's not the gospel. The gospel has nothing to do with earning. The gospel is given by grace through faith. And so when we receive Christ through faith, we receive the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we shouldn't have to earn any other additional version of the Holy Spirit, any other second blessing or second baptism. That's not, that's not um, taught in Scripture, frankly, that's contrary to the gospel. That is another gospel. We don't need to earn a bonus Holy Spirit or additional anointings. So, and then what happens a lot of times, and this happens too often, is that, you know, people aren't feeling something or they don't experience something or they don't fall down unless they fake it and they aren't shaking or they don't speak in tongues unless they fake it. And and then the speaker says, well, you're not ready. There's something not right. You didn't position yourself. You must have sin. You must have a generational curse. You must have bad bloodlines. You must have an evil spirit on you. You need to work on that. You need to do something. You need to accomplish something. You need to go, you need to go down and, and figure this out. And, and, and it puts such an undue burden on Christians thinking, well, why can't I have more of the Spirit? There's something wrong with me. I need to figure this out. And then they go down these rabbit tra trails for all this other stuff. Again, then they're ignoring the indwelling Spirit that they already have and the Scripture that we already have available to us. It's disappointing and it puts people in a bad state of mind and uh, burdened and weighted down. And of course, it's not the speaker's fault. They're already anointed. They've got it. It must be your fault that you didn't do something. You weren't ready. You weren't positioned to receive the second baptism. So that's number five. And number six, the second baptism of the Spirit sometimes imparts evil spirits. Now, this is a tough thing to say, and it's probably a tough thing to hear to some folks, but I think this is the biggest and it's the most important problem. It's really the main thing that really turned me off to this completely and made me think, you know, this is something that I need to speak out against. When Last time, um, and you can go back to look at it, and frankly, you can look this up on YouTube. We looked at a couple instances where you're, you're looking at something happening when people are laying hands on people or praying over them, and it is a crazy experience that people are um, lying down, um, writhing in pain. Basically, it seems like they're burning um, and it's so sad and it's so unfortunate. And, you know, we have to conclude something that if the second baptism of the Holy Spirit is not true, if it doesn't happen, if this is something that's contrary to Scripture, it, we've concluded that based on the Acts study, the second baptism of the Spirit, receiving a second additional anointing of the Spirit, we've concluded that that is not biblical. If that's unbiblical, but people are still receiving some sort of encounter or something come upon them, then what is that? That's the grave concern. That's the problem. If it's not the Holy Spirit, then what is it? Because they're experiencing something or someone, they're falling on the ground. Some of them are shaking. Some of them are, are 
barking, uh, all sorts of, you know, there's some crazy things out there. What is causing it? And unfortunately, there are evil spirits that will latch onto this and people are imparting demons onto other people. I don't know how else to say that. Um, and to attribute this to God is unfortunate. And you may say, I can't believe that you're that you're criticizing the work of the Holy Spirit. This, if you analyze it and compare it to Scripture and compare it to what the Holy Spirit does, you have to conclude, um, unless you've been blinded to the truth, you have to conclude that some of this stuff is not the Holy Spirit. And if it's not the Holy Spirit, then what is it? That is a sobering conclusion that if it's not the Holy Spirit, then it could be a counterfeit spirit. It might be an evil spirit, a demon. And frankly, this is one of the things that really riles me up because if we attribute this to God, then we are blaspheming the name of God. If we are attributing some of these things, these second works of the Spirit that you see to God when it is not Him, then we are blaspheming the name of God. And we can't stand by for that. I, I speak about this because we can't stand by for the defamation of God Almighty. That's what happens. We are defaming God Almighty, the name of God Almighty, and we are bringing danger to the church. Let me say those two things again in summation here. The teaching and the practice of the second baptism of the Holy Spirit does two things. One, it it is a defamation of the name of God Almighty, and two, it is dangerous to the body of Christ. That is the bottom line here, and that's why um, we're teaching on it here on this channel. It is another gospel. We need to teach about it, and that's why I bring this up. Please watch yourself. Do not get yourself involved with some of these conferences, with some of these people that will do this. Do your own research. Look at the book of Acts and see how this isn't normative. Find a place in the rest of Scripture where Paul, Peter, James, John teach about this quote-unquote second of the bap second baptism of the Spirit. It doesn't exist. And so we need to be careful. We need to say, well, what is really going on here? And what is really going on is not good. So I'll end with that warning. Uh, the second baptism of the Holy Spirit is not only wrong, but it's dangerous. I understand that we want to improve our spiritual life. We want to follow God. We want to be more like Christ. But there are more biblical ways to speak about this, to teach about this. There are more accurate scriptural concepts. There are more practical ways to go about this in line with the Holy Spirit. And that's what we'll talk about in a future episode. But I'll leave it at that. Thanks for joining me today in our biblical quest for truth. So we can stand strong through every wind and wave of teaching. Please like, subscribe, share, and until next time, may your life be governed by the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ each and every day. Amen.